Sometimes the farther away you are from something, the better it is. Like death, girlfriends, or the level of understanding you have and how your food's prepared. But also, the root note, the farther away you get from that, some of the tastiest intervals and melody licks you can come up with are actually right there. So today, we're gonna talk about going through all the seventh intervals in a scale and kind of play them in a chord scale in ways that you can kind of get creative with it, all right? So, what is an interval? Is a space between two notes, all right? We're gonna do this in the key of C, everybody's favorite, but you can move this around and kind of see the connections everywhere. So, if we take a C, third fret on the A string, okay? The seventh note in the key of C, you just go up to the C major scale. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, another C. So, a seventh, a major seven away, is right there, a C to a B, okay? Now, every single one of these seven notes, you can think of as a starting point, and then going through the key of C's notes to find it, right? We can go through all sorts of different shapes, like uh, different modes, like the Dorian mode would be on D, the minus go with a sharp six. Now, if you count to seven, you get this right here. Fifth fret on the A string, and the fifth fret on the G string. This is called a minor seven, okay? And the cool thing about all the core, all the no notes and chords in a scale is it's either one of two things. It's either a major seven or a minor seven. Regardless of what type of seventh chord it is, it could be a dominant seventh chord, it could be a minor seven flat five chord. It's either going to have a major seven or a minor seven. And it's really simple to see once you kind of see uh, going through all the notes on it, right? So if we start with the C, this is one of only two spots that actually have a major seven. You can always think of a major seven if you're rooting on either the low E string or the A string as being down two frets, one fret, or down two strings, one fret higher, okay? So from three A to four G, there's my major seven interval. Now I go a whole step higher to find the two chord, which is a D. That's gonna be in line with each other, okay? So D and it's minor seven. It also goes with a minor chord, minor seven chord, etc. Exact same thing is gonna happen if you go two frets higher to the next note and see it, which is E minor, okay, will be the chord, but E and it's seventh, it's minor seventh. Now the next one is gonna be F, the four chord, and it is the only other one that's gonna have a major seven uh, interval right there. So this kind of pairs up with C's major seven, C. So if you ever wanna find whatever root note you're in, Let's take a different, let's go up a string, right? G, if we wanted to find G's uh, partner that has a major seven, we'd just go from three to eight, okay? So you can think of it as, as five frets, two and a half steps, however you want to look at it. But it's the one to the four chord that has that major seven. Now, the interesting thing about this is the five chord in the key of C is a G. All right, now this is a major chord. If we were to play a chord with it, it would be G major. But G actually, if we go through the notes of the key of C starting on G, we end up with a G, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. So that has a flat seven or a minor seven. So G is a major chord with a minor seven interval. And that's why it's so kind of bluesy because it's this minor over major type feel. All right, so after we get past F, the other notes, the six and seven, or uh, the five, six, and seven, are all gonna be minor sevens. So G, it's minor seven. A, it's minor seven. B, it's minor seven. Back to C. Okay, so if I did all of them just on this one string, it would be C major seven, D flat seven, E flat seven, F major seven, G flat seven, B, and especially that, that B note, we haven't, we don't talk about this a lot, depending on what type of genre of music you're listening to, because that becomes a minor seven flat five chord. It's a really beautiful chord, but maybe not always practical in the genre that you're using. So because it has a minor third and a minor seven, it's almost a minor chord anyways. So if you wanted to maybe play something a little bit different, take that seventh note, turn it into just a straight up minor chord, and you won't totally be wrong. I mean, you're never wrong, but it, it fits really well. So how we can maybe use this is to start incorporating these together because once you kind of have uh, the, the sound of a root note and it's seventh, you can kind of get some cool things going on. Instead of uh, just like a full voiced C major seven, maybe you can kind of just take this. And I'm really just playing a root note and it's seventh. I'm not even thinking, oh, 
like is it, what's the chord behind this or what else should be played? It's just going through this kind of chord scale with seventh notes. And then eventually you kind of get uh, the feel for the space between maybe where you're going. Now another thing that's really cool is if you play in a key where the open strings will always help you out, you can kind of use these more as chord shapes. So in the key of C, right, there's no sharps or flats, just like the open string set, E, A, D, G, B, E, no sharps or flats. So any of those notes are gonna fit in there. And then if I wanna kind of add just a C, it's major seven, and then just kind of start adding different things in the key of C, I know the open strings won't sound bad. I'm just going through those shapes. kind of find the resolution there. So it's just an interesting way to maybe get outside of the same shapes that you're used to and start experimenting and try to maybe come up with different things. I really like that open string thing because it, you know you're not even so much being thoughtful about what else is in this chord. You can really break it down if you want. Like I've got a C and a B. I've got another open B. So I've actually got a C, two Bs, an E, and a D. So it's like all right well am I like adding a nine? I have my major third in there. So, you know, I could think of this as like a major nine chord or whatever, but you know, again, don't overthink it. Just kind of play it. Find something that you like the sound of. And then just kind of start thinking about maybe the relationship between the one and its seventh, no matter what key you're in, because these distances will always uh, help you out. You can really use it in lead playing a lot. Like whatever, like, let's just take the first three chords here. The C, it's major seven. D, it's minor seven, and E. All right, maybe if you kind of want to hit some kind of solo, it doesn't even matter whatever key you're in. Be like, okay, I'm playing in the key of, you know, G sharp or A flat. Maybe you're not familiar with that a lot. Instead of maybe going to what a lot of people do, go to like the minor pentatonic, you can do something where you just hit that first thing. And it's like, all right, I always know that wherever my root note is, two frets higher, those are two notes I can always grab, the root and the minor the minor seven. Two frets higher than that, I can always grab that, as long as I know where my root note is. So it's always just kind of a way that you can grab something close to the root note wherever you're starting, and then eventually you can kind of maybe expand upon that throw it in with some of your arpeggios that you've been doing, uh, and then add the cool scale stuff on top of it. And then it's just different ways to kind of vary your lead playing. So hopefully that kind of helped out, give you maybe another idea in how to see the fretboard. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, or the website, and we'll talk to you all soon. Thanks a lot.